One day I saw an article in a local newspaper saying that a local bar had started an a amateur stand-up comedy night. I went up and I watched it one night. I saw the guys that were doing it and I said, I can do that. And the next week I was back doing it and I've been doing it for 24 years ever since. Please put your hands together for a very funny man and a good friend of mine, Mr. Tim Lilly, everybody. Tim! The comedy circuit was really, at that time, just being built and they were in search of people to go out and do the jobs and everything like that. Hey Rich Higginbottom, it's Tim Lilly. Um, I got a gig coming up Saturday, June 14th in Bay City. My first road gig, the person called me out of the clear blue sky. He called me on a Wednesday. He goes, you want to come to Columbus, Ohio on Friday and Saturday? And I went, no, I don't think so. And he goes, no, I don't think you understand what I'm offering you. So I took the job and that's really how I got in to the, get into the circuit. I'm having a shitty week, I'll tell you that right now. Started yesterday morning, first thing out the door, I stepped in dog shit. I didn't just step in dog shit either, I turd surfed. <laughs> there are certainly sacrifices that have to be made to be a stand-up comic. My comedy career has cost me two marriages. My first marriage, probably because I was on the road so much, uh, I'm divorced. <laughs> I know you're thinking, the fool! <laughs> Why, who could leave that big fat burlives looking son of a bitch, huh? <laughs> if, as they're coming up, if they're married, you know, what do they do? They have to leave on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday. They're gone for three or four days, come home, you know, say hi to the wife, the family, clean up, go back on the road again. It genuinely takes a day to get readjusted to being off the road and back in your little family. And then when you're on the road, some people see it as you shirking your responsibilities at home. And like, um, I suppose, all three of my ex-wives. Was it Ken Rogerson says, why is divorce so expensive? Because it's worth it. <laughs> okay, just so I know what I'm talking to, real quick, clap if you've ever been through a divorce. Clap if you've ever been through a divorce. <laughs> it's definitely enough to talk about. I always kind of laugh though because you see the ladies and the ladies always clapping like... <laughs> and the guys are clapping like, yeah, I've been through a fucking divorce. <laughs> Let me tell you about a porcupine. I ran into Tim Allen. Tim goes, uh, you know, how how you doing? I go, no, not too good. I'm going through, it, getting ready to go through a divorce. And he goes, oh man, that's it. He goes, you you got to come out to L.A. I'll help you. I'll give you phone numbers. I'll I'll get you to meet people and all that kind of stuff. So, the next day I called him. I said, Tim, were were you serious about that? And he goes, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, call me next week in L.A. and uh, and we'll work something out. And so I called him the next week in L.A. and he had changed his phone number. That's my daughter, and this is my ex-wife. With the second marriage, it was more of a financial thing. I had a brand new baby daughter that I wanted to be home with all the time and uh, didn't want to go on the road. Do you need my help? Uh, I think I got it. I just, I realized that I could do comedy part-time not travel as much, add a day job to that, and live a, a essentially the same life. This is one of the reasons I, I wanted to get off the road was I had developed back problems, and all that driving from gig to gig to gig was just making it impossible on, on my back. So what do I do? I get a job that uh, I drive over a thousand miles a week. You guys have been a lot of fun, that's a lie, but I'm saying it for the camera. Because <laughs> quite frankly, you guys are just sitting there. I don't know what I gotta do to wake you guys up. You know, if you've got a stale crowd, you have to just work them. You have to start improv with them, you have to start talking with them, interacting with them, that kind of thing, to get them energized. Leave you guys with a joke. How's that sound? <laughs> it's been time, fat ass, get funny. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna just eat it. And you never know why. Number two, Lily, ladies and gentlemen. 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 Number two, Lily, 
They're, they're not real friendly. They're not a friendly crowd. It's hard to face the reality of, yeah, maybe I just sucked that night. I knew nobody was laughing, but I kept going anyway, and there was a gentleman in the back row that, when I said, gee, it's about time for me to go, stood up and applauded. I was about halfway through the act and totally blank, did not know where I was going, and apologized and said, hold on, I lost my train of thought, and then eventually it all came back to me and I continued. I don't know how long I stood on stage in a daze trying to recall what it was, but it was really awkward, and I almost said, that's it, I'm not doing this again. There was maybe four people in the audience, and the guy told me I should quit comedy, that I wasn't funny, that I was never going to be funny, and he can't imagine whatever made me think I was funny and that he didn't want to pay me. And he paid me, and I remember thinking, man, maybe I should just quit. It's, it's a haunting experience. You know, you can't make it about yourself. You have to make it about the situation and about, like, how to fix it. Comics are very hard on themselves, but every now and then we'll go, you know, that worked in, in every other town except this one. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe they just don't get it. You know, failure makes you smart, makes you strong, it makes you better. I had a particularly good show, and at the end of the show, the promoter came up to me and said, if you would have been this funny back when you were hungry, you would have been a big star. The aspirations of me going out to Hollywood and being a movie star are pretty much out. I just like to be able to get to the point of my life where I don't have to screen every phone call because I'm afraid it's a bill collector. I gotta go, my time's up. You guys were fun, thank you all very much. Bye-bye, everybody. I wish I would have done more, I guess. But I'm still proud of what I've done.